Hi there, I'm John Lebensold for Killer PHP, and today what I'm going to be doing is building on our last tutorial where we talked about border radiuses and uh, some of the new CSS3 declarations that are be going to be coming out. And uh, we've been building this very simple application, or not even an application really, just a very simple website. And it's a website template where we've got this navigation here. And we've got sort of a, a top header here with some borders or some rounded corners. And what I'm going to do in this tutorial is show you how you can create gradients with CSS3 and HTML5. And also how you can make sure that it works in uh, two of the kind of leading browsers when we're talking about gradients and rounded corners and all these new effects and making sure that they work both in Safari Google Chrome, and Mozilla Firefox. And those are really kind of the major players when we're talking about HTML5 websites, at least at this stage. So let's get started. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just quickly give you an update as to where we're at. This is our HTML5 page here. You'll notice it with the doc type being pretty straightforward. We've got a header section, we've got a nav, and then we've got a section at the bottom here with a left content section and then a, a side section. We could probably even get rid of that class left and we might do that later on when we want to optimize our CSS. But for now, at least in this tutorial or this video, what I want to focus on is just getting those rounded corners looking good in both browsers and making sure that uh, we can get gradients as well. Now, when we're talking about when we're talking about Firefox, what we're really talking about is the Mozilla engine. And that is why when you look at the style declaration here, the style.css file, you'll see that in the header section, I've got this little dash moz dash border radius. Now eventually, dash moz dash this part of your CSS declaration will no longer be necessary. Once the standard gets finalized, it won't matter. Um, and whether you're, you're saying, hey, Mozilla, wake up to this, or you know, Safari or Google Chrome, wake up to this, you're not going to have to do that. And unfortunately, right now, you've got two sort of implementations of CSS. You've got the Mozilla implementation, and you have another one called WebKit. Now, Google Chrome and Safari and uh, a whole bunch of other web browsers based on uh, those engines are basically running off of the WebKit engine, which is just another way of rendering CSS and making pages look beautiful. So, for example, if I open up Google Chrome right here, and I go to the exact same website, hold on one second, just loading up. Here we go. So now I've got Google Chrome running. Just going to zoom out a little bit. And you'll notice that Google Chrome hasn't taken to my rounded corners. And in order for that to happen, we have to add an additional declaration, which is dash WebKit, border, dash radius, and then again, it's 0 pixels, 0 pixels, 12 pixels, 12 pixels. Hit save, refresh, and now we're getting the rounded corners here. To give you an idea of how this is different, if I set this to 25 pixels, and then I set my Mozilla border radius to 12, then over here I'm going to get a larger rounded corner. And then when I go back to Firefox, nothing is going to change. And that's pretty much it. So let's finalize this whole menu thing. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go back to my file system and I'm just going to create a new directory for this particular stage in our project. I'm going to call it 03 because I can't come up with anything better. And I'm just going to copy these two files, my index.html file and my CSS file. And lastly, I'm going to go to my editor here, and I'm just going to open those files. This way, when you're looking at the course material, it'll be very easy for you to follow along going from one video to the next. And lastly, instead of being on 02, point it to 03, and point it to 03. Now let's talk about gradients for a second. 
this whole section at the top here could actually be a gradient if I wanted it to. And uh, it would be pretty straightforward to do that. And I'm going to show you how to do it first in Mozilla, and then we're going to look at how we can do that in WebKit. So to do a gradient requires a little bit of thought. Normally, you'll notice that we have this background declaration. Now, we can change this background declaration to be a completely different color. If I want to make it red, it's going to be F00. And then if I refresh this now, I'm going to get a red background. Now, what if I wanted to get a gradient that went from red to this gray? Well, if I was doing this with, uh, if I was doing this with Mozilla, then I would add an additional background statement here. And I would say dash MOZ dash linear gradient, close those brackets, and then a semicolon. And in here, I would have to say the position horizontally and then the position uh, vertically. So if I said center left, that would be in the middle and the left, or in the middle of the page and then the left. And then I would say CC, 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 0%. That means start at the top. And then FF, 0, 0, 0, 0, 100%. And that would be the bottom. Now let's see what happens. So now in the center left, in other words, right here, you can see that I have started a gradient that's going to travel all the way across to the right hand side of the page. Now this is a pretty dramatic effect but we're going to try and do something a little more elegant for the navigation. So with that in place I'm going to go down to my nav and I'm also going to put in a, a uh, gradient and this one is going to be a little less dramatic and we're going to use a different way of defining our color spectrum. So in my navigation here, I'm going to say that I want the nav section to have a background. So you'll notice we've got two background declarations here. One is a background just like a safety net in case that you can't properly implement. Hi. Let me just pause this. So you'll notice here that we still have our background declaration. And the reason for that is that in case, you know, Internet Explorer or another browser that doesn't necessarily support gradients is viewing our page, we can still, of course, have uh, it be displayed. By the way, when I was talking about Mozilla and WebKit, uh, all the iOS uh, platforms, whether it be the iPad or the iPhone or the iPod, uh, all of these use WebKit, and there are some additional effects that you can use on the iPhone if you're building an iPhone-based web application and you want to use some really iPhone-specific effects, whether they be fades or animations or transitions. But that's a whole other video.